All right, this next example is going to uh, it's going to be a purely geometric situation, but um, it, it certainly doesn't have to be so geometric here. This idea in, in this question here was going to minimize distance. So imagine you have a parabola, y squared equals 2x. Now, you'll notice I'm actually squaring the y and not the x. And so this is going to go as a concave right parabola here. And we want to find the point on the parabola which is closest to the point 1, 4, which is not on the parabola. So on the, on the picture, you can kind of see an estimate of where that closest point might be. And so if we're looking for a point that's closest, closest to the point, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to minimize distance. And so if you're trying to minimize distance, we're going to have to use the distance formula in order to make that work. So the general distance formula, you're going to take x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And this all sits inside of the square root right here. Well, one of the points is fixed. It's the point 1 comma 4. So really, we're looking at x minus 1 squared plus y minus 4 squared. And we go from there. And so this is our this is the distance we're trying to minimize. Now, at the moment, it has the two variables, x and y. We'll come back to that in just a second. But a, a very useful trick that comes into play when one tries to deal with minimizing distance, because the distance form is kind of complicated in terms of derivatives because of the square root and the necessary chain rule. Uh, what, what often one can do is if you square both sides, you look at the distance squared. This removes the square root on the right-hand side. So you just get x minus 1 squared plus... Uh, y minus 4 squared. And this is often more preferable because in order to minimize distance, you can accomplish this at the same time if you try to minimize distance squared. And that is you can find the minimal distance implicitly. This leads to a much easier derivative calculation. All right, but we're still stuck with the situation that we have two variables, x and y. How do we get rid of them? Well, we need a constraint. What is the constraint in the situation? It's the parabola itself, y equals x squared. Because after all, the point has to be a point on the parabola. And so we use the parabola as the constraint. Uh, you have y squared equals 2x. Think about the forthcoming derivative. If you solve for y, you'd get y equals the square root of 2x. Uh-uh, we don't want square roots in our derivative, but we can avoid it. On the other hand, if you divide both sides by 2, you get x equals y squared over 2. And that's going to be a much simpler calculation in terms of the derivative. So we're going to make that substitution in for x right here. All right, so let's, let's see what it would look like. d squared is equal to y squared over 2 minus 1 squared plus y minus 1, sorry, y minus 4 squared. So now this thing is prepped for taking derivatives. Um, if we take the derivative, you're going to end up with a 2d d prime equals, uh, let's see, by the chain rule, you're going to get 2 times y squared over 2 minus 1. Then don't forget the inner derivative, for which case you're just going to get a y. And then add to that 2 times y minus 4. And this should all equal 0. Now, if you look at the left-hand side, we have that 2d d prime equals 0. Well, okay. Well, if a product of things equals 0, it's because one of the factors was 0. Well, what's factor? Well, it's not 2. 2 doesn't equal 0, so that's not the culprit. Could it be d? d is the distance. Is the distance equal to 0? Well, like we saw above, the d equals 0 would mean that 1.4 lived on the parabola. Uh, but... You can check that it doesn't happen. Uh, y squared gives you 16, and 2 times x gives you 2. That's not a solution. So the distance does not equal 0 in this context. So the only way that this product equals 0 is if d prime equals 0. And that was the justification why we can work with distance squared instead of just distance. All right, so what do we have here? Distribute and multiply things out a little bit. Uh, we will end up with a y squared. Oops. Let's switch it back to white. 
we get a y squared, actually y cubed, minus 2y plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. Uh, you can see that the y's cancel out, and we're left with y squared minus 8, y cubed, excuse me, minus 8 equals 0. Solving for y cubed, we get y cubed equals 8, and taking the cube root, we'll get y equals 2, uh, the cube root of 8. Now, that's this is our critical number. And so there seems like high hopes that this will give us the closest point. And if we come back up to the picture we had before, uh, y equals 2, y equals 2 right here, that kind of seems to be about where we put this thing. Again, this was just an estimate of where it is, but it seems like y should equal 2. Uh, but what would the x-coordinate be? Well, if you come to the parabola when y equals 2, you're going to get 2 squared equals 2x. Uh, so you get 4 equals 2x divided by 2. x equals 2. And that seems to be the point. Uh, 2 comma 2 seems to be the best point there. In terms of domain, though, what would the domain of this thing be? Like, how close can we get or how far can we get? Well, if you follow down this trajectory down here, uh, you can get arbitrarily farther and farther and farther away. Turns out if you go down this path, the distance from uh, 1, 4 is going to go to infinity. That's not the minimum distance. But if we go down the other trajectory, go farther and farther and farther away, same issue. We're going to get farther and farther and farther away from this point, and that can get arbitrarily large going to infinity as well. So it would appear that our single critical number actually gives us our closest point. 2, 2 is the closest point on the parabola to the point 1, 4.